United States District Court, Eastern District of New York, Robert Sylvester Kelly, Defendant Robert Sylvester Kelly Sentence Memorandum Part 1, Jennifer Bonjean, Introduction. The defendant files a preliminary sentence memorandum in support of his contention that the guidelines range of his convictions is 168 to 210 months. The defendant further contends that upon consideration of the factors set forth in 18 U.S.C., this court should sentence the defendant to a below guidelines sentence. Consistent with the court order, defendant intends to submit a supplemental sentencing memorandum on June 13, 2022 that addresses the 3553A factors with supporting mitigations that shed light on the history and characteristics of the defendant. Argument. A district court should begin all sentencing proceedings by correctly calculating the applicable guideline range, which should be the starting point and the initial benchmark. Gale versus United States, 50, 552 U.S., 38, 49, 2007. After a proper calculation, a sentencing judge considered for the seven factors set forth in 18 U.S.C., 3553A, the nature of the circumstances of the offenses, and the history and the characteristics of the defendant. The fourth lit legitimate purpose of the sentencing has set forth below. The kind of sentencing is available. The applicable guidelines range itself in a relevant, a relevant pol policy statement by the Sentencing Commission that needs to avoid unwarranted sentencing disparities among defendants and the need to provide restitution to any victims. In determining the appropriate sentence, the statute directs judge to impose a sentence sufficient but no greater than necessary to comply with the purpose of sentencing, which are a, a reflect of seriousness of the offense, to promote respect for the law, and to provide just punishment for the offense. B, to avoid inadequate de deterrence to criminal conduct. C, to protect the public from further crimes of the defendant. And D, to provide the defendant with need educational and vocational training, medical care, and other correctional treatments in the most effective manner. 18 U.S.C. 5353A. Two, the guideline sentencing in this case is 168 to 210 months. The government and probation argues that the defendant guidelines range is life, although they take different routes of arriving to that conclusion. As set forth in detail below, many of the enhancements suggested by the government and probation are simply unsupported by the evidence and the law. Defendant argues that the range of 168 to 210 months. Probation set forth a comprehensive summary of the charges, convictions, and evidence presented in this case. Defendant has already lodged objections in response to the pre-sentencing investigation report, including objections in some of the probation's statements about the government's evidence. Defendant will highlight a trial record in the case as necessary below. Defendant was convicted on one count of RICO based on the conduct alleged to have occurred between 1994 and 2018. The base offense level of racketeering offense is greater than 19 or the offense level applicable to the underlying racketeering activity, USSG. Application note that the Commentary Guidelines 2E1-1 instructs that where there is more than one underlying offense, treat underlying offense as if contained in a separate count of conviction for the purpose of subsection A2. The defendant calculates the offense level for each racketeering act as follows. A. Racketeering Act 1, Bribery. Based offense level 12. Adjust offense level 12. The government and probation contends that two-level enhancement is justified on the basis of the defendant use a person less than 18 years of age to commit an offense. As argued in the defendant's Rule 
29 motion, the government evidence failed to show that the defendant knew that Demetrius Smith paid money to the to influence the public aid officer to produce an identification card for Jane Doe number one, Aaliyah. The records also devoid of any evidence that defendant used Aaliyah in connection with the bribery. Of course, the bribery committed by Smith produced a fraudulent public aid card for Aaliyah, but it does not follow the defendant used Aaliyah in the bribery. According to the defendant objects to a two level enhancement pursuant to US S G B racketeering act two sexual exploitation. Stephanie Base 1, level 32, adjusted offense level 32. The government and probation are, argues that a two-level enhancement is appropriate for pursuant to USSG 2G2-1BA2A on the grounds that the offense involved in the commission of a sexual act. The defendant was found guilty of sexual exploitation based on Stephanie's testimony that Stephanie recorded a sex sexual act with her when she was 17 years old in violation of 18 usc 2251a the government contends that because sexually explicit conduct an element of 2251a violation does not necessarily involve a sexual act the defendant is subject to a two-level enhancement pursuant to ussg because he engaged in the sexual act with stephanie the defendant disagrees Enhancing defendant sentencing based on facts that form the basis of the offense amount to impermissible doubt counting, double counting, excuse me. Impermissible double counting occurs when one part of the guidelines is applied to increase the defendant's sentencing to reflect the kind of harm that has already been fulfilled counted by another part of the guidelines. United States versus Watkins, 67F, state law, case law. The only conduct proved by the government that qualified as sexual exploited conduct was the sexual act. Even if the government could have theoretically proved sexual exploitation without evidence of sexual act, it does not follow the government can enhance a penalty based on conduct that has already counted for in the base offense level. According to the two-level enhancement, it's unwarranted. C. Racketeering Act 3 and 4, Kidnapping and Man Act Violation, Sonia. The defendant was acquitted in Racketeering Act 3 and 4 related to Jane Doe number 3. The government contends that because it could prove these racketeering acts by the law preponderance of evidence, they can be taken into consideration pursuant to the United States Rug Ro. The defendant contends that were the per jury clearly found that Sonia's testimony was not credible. The court should not consider Racketeering Act 3 and 4 in calculating the guideline range. Despite the government's contentions, it does not ask this court to consider these acts in calculating guideline range. D. Racketeering Act 5, Man Act Violation, Geronda, ba Base Offense Level 24, Adjusted Offense Level 24. The government are urges two points enhancement pursuant to USSG because the offenses involve undue influence towards a minor to engage in prohibited sexual conduct. Undue influence is defined in the guidelines as activity that compromises the voluntariness of a minor's behavior. The defining characteristics of undue influence is that it involves a situation where the influencer has su succeeded in altering the behavior of target United States versus Patterson. The government contends that a rebuttable presumption of undue influence exists because the defendant was greater than 10 years older than the 16 year old Geronda when they engaged in a sexual activity between 2009 and two. In January 2010. Contrary to the government's contention, the defendant rebuts the presumption of undue influence. The trial record refutes of any suggestion that the defendant did any anything in altering the behavior of Geronda. Quite the opposite. Geronda, a sophisticated 16-year-old, took great pains 
to get a to get close to the defendant, including by represent misrepresenting her age. Defendant did nothing to seek out Geronda. In contrast, Geronda forged a relationship with the people in the defendant's orbit, falsely claiming to be 19 years of age. All to get access to the defendant, Geronda admits that she falsely told the defendant that she was 19 years of age when they engaged in a sexual conduct. It is true that Geronda claims that she pr promptly confessed her real age of 16 to the defendant immediately after her first encounter. However, even if this is true, Geronda's testimony does not reveal that defendant used any influence, undue or otherwise, to engage in a sexual activity with her. The defendant has been sufficiently punished for his offense and a two-level enhancement for undue influence is simply not justified on the facts of this case. Similarly, a two-point enhancement is entirely unjust pursuant to USSG 2G3-1, where a second record is devoid of evidence that is offense involved the use of a computer or cell phone to induce the travel of a minor. The government points this court to phone logs, random photos, and a single text alleging that the defendant stating, please call as evidence of use of a cell phone to induce travel. The evidence fails to show the defendant induced Geronda to travel to her home. The record shows that Geronda traveled to the defendant's home without invitation and at her own vol volition. Indeed, the evidence showed that Geronda snuck into the defendant's home when the defendant was not even in town. The defendant did not induce Geronda to travel to his house. Furthermore, no record exists to establish a nature of any communication. Indeed, Geronda's testimony does not support the government's argument that she has ever induced to travel to his house by a cell phone communication or any manner. An invitation does not equal inducement. The Second Circuit has made clear that the terms persuade, induce, entice, and coerce are words to common usage that have planned ordinary meanings case law the court distinguished the conduct from merely acts which is not sufficient to demonstrate criminality recognizing that there might be a some uncertainty as to the precise demarcation between persuading which is criminalized and asking which is not the government Evidence fails to show any specific words of persuasion that the defendant used a connection with Geronda. Thus, even if the government could argue that the defendant asked or invited her to his home and told her that someone would pick her up at the train station, that conducts is not inducement. Thus, a two-level enhancement is not supported by this record. Last, a two-point enhancement is unwarranted pursuant to the USSG. The government continues to argue that the that because the violation of 18 USC does not necessitate a illegal sexual activity, an enhancement of sexual contact does not amount to dis displicative punishment. The government argues it's flawed where Racketeering Act 5 is per premised on a criminal act, namely aggravated criminal sexual abuse under Illinois criminal code. In short, to prove Racketeering Act 5 as charged, the government was required to prove a sex act. Thus, any enhancement based on a sex act is duplicative to the charge offense and the enhancement amount to double counting. E. Racketeering Act 6, forced labor, Geronda, base level, base offense level 30, USSG 2, adjusted level offense 32. As the government pointed out, probation calculation of the adjusted offense level for this count of Uranus, where the, where the count did not include a production of child pornography. Although the defendant agrees with the government that the base level is 30. He objects to a four level enhancement pursuant to 2A3 because the government evidence did not establish under any standards of proof. 
that the forced labor count involved conduct described in 18 U.S.C. As argued extensively in Defendant's Rule 29 motion, Geronda's testimony described an assault unrelated to any sexual conduct. Geronda testified that the defendant slapped and choked her because she was on her phone and did not believe she was texting a friend. Geronda testified after the assault, she gave the defendant oral sex because she instructed her to do so. Geronda's testimony is devoid of any mention of threat and violence or acts of force in connection with oral sex act. The previously described physical assault was completed and unrelated to his instruction that she gave him oral sex. Geronda did not even testify that she feared the defendant when she was asked for oral sex or she complied. Thus, the government claimed that the defendant placed Geronda in fear of death and serious bodily injury and is meritless. According to a four-level enhancement is unjustified on this record. Recordering Act 7, sexual exploitation of a child, Geronda, base offense level 32, adjusted offense level 32. The government argues, uh, I mean, excuse me, the government agrees that there is no evidence that the defendant used force in connection with the production of a child pornography and that a le four level enhancement is inappropriate the defendant objects to a two-point enhancement pursuant to ussg where the record is devoid of evidence is that the offense involved the use of a computer or cell phone to induce geronda travel g racketeering act eight man act violation jane base of level offense 14 adjusted uh, offense level 14. The government concedes that Jane misrepresented her age to the defendant when she met him in Florida of April 2019, which kicked off a lengthy relationship. Incredibly, the government seeks a four level enhancement on this count, arguing that the defendant committed a fraud in connection with the man act violation because he did not disclose to Jane he had genital herpes. The government seeks to stretch the guideline beyond all recognition, which explains its failure to offer any support for its novel theory that the failure to disclose the herpes diagnosis amount to fraud, either as defined by federal fraud statutes, state statutes, or under common law. According to the Second Circuit, fraud involves a false representation scientier, re re reliance and harm uh, case law while there have been a few variations of these elements harm is always presented the government evidence does not show the defendant falsely represent anything to jane or jane relied on misrepresentation although absence is in any evidence of harm because there is no evidence that Jane was affected with herpes when she traveled to California with the defendant between 8 April 2018 and 2015 and May 1st 2015 the government cannot show that any harm resulted in this failure to disclose his herpes diagnosis indeed Jane testified that she did not contract herpes from the defendant during this trip Thus, the government fraud theory is patently ridiculous. A four-level uh, enhancement must be rejected under this theory. Racketeering Act 9, Man Act Violation Jane. Base level offense 24, adjusted offense level 24. The government alleges that the base level for Racketeering Act 9 is 32 pursuant to the USSG, which involves sexual exploitation of a minor by production of of sexual exploitation visual and print material racketeering act nine was a man act violation and therefore is appropriate guidelines can be found at usg pursuant to ussg the base level 
is 28 where the jury determined that the defendant was guilty of violation of 18 USC. The government seeks to convert this offense into an offense of sexual exploitation of a child, arguing that the base level is 32. But the government failed to explain why the court should not look at USSG. 2G13 C1 as part as the starting point of correcting calculation of the base offense level as to racketeering act 9 where defendant was not convicted of sexual exploitation but rather a man act violation notably defendant was separately charged and convicted of sexual exploitation of a child in connection with a video recording sexual activities with Jane during their trip to California the government theories fails for other reasons all the time defendant purportedly committed racketeering act nine jane was living with the defendant and engaged in a legally consensual relationship in the state of illinois this is undisputed no matter how distasteful the government finds it this is nothing in the record that suggests that defendant brought jane to california for the purpose of producing a visual depiction of their sexual activity notably the government previously argued that the defendant proposed purpose in bringing jane to california was to expose her to herpes the government seems to believe that the defendant purpose in bringing jane to california is whatever they say is depending on what element is needed to prove as defendant argue in his rule 29 motion defendant motivatedly purpose in bringing jane to california was to have her companionship even in concluded sexual contact while jane testified that her relationship with the defendant involved sex the intimate relationship was legal in the state of illinois it is entirely illogical to suggest that the government does not does the defendant had a purpose in bringing jane to california to have sex with her where they shared a home in the state of illinois where the age of consent was 17 even if the government persuasively argued that the defendant purpose in bringing jane to california was to have sex with her it cannot be said the defendant motivating purpose or any purpose was to produce video of that sexual activity the government knows very well that the defendant travel with jane had absolutely nothing to do with producing commercial child pornography any attempt to increase the offense level under this theory is illegally wrong the government agrees that in the enhancement pursuant to ussc is inappropriate according to the adjustment level for racketeering act 9 is 24 Racketeering Act 10, Man Act Violation Jane, base, le uh, base offense level 32, adjusted offense level 32. Defendant objects to a two-point enhancement pursuant to USSG and the grounds that the offense involved the commission of sexual act. Defendant was found sexually guilty of sexual exploitation in violation of 18 USC based solely on Jane's testimony that the defendant recorded their sexual activity in late 2015 when she was 17, almost 18 years old. Notably, the sexual activity that occurred in the Northern District of Illinois was legal conduct, even if the even if the record uh, even even if recording recording of it was not. The government evidence turned entirely on Jane's testimony and the government produced no video of defendant and Jane engaging in sexual activity during their time period. First, the government should not be permitted to enhance the sentencing guideline for this offense based on sexual contact that occurred in the Northern District of Illinois since that contact was not unlawful. The unlawful activity in the Northern District was filming of the contact not the contact itself therefore the enhancement could only be applicable for any sexual contact in the state of california but again as argued supra because of sexual contact that occurred in california arguably forms the basis of the charges of uh, charged offense it would de duplicatively duplicative uh to enhance the to enhance the offense based on sexual contact.
Contrary to the government's argument, simply because sexual ex, uh, expli- sp- explicit conduct does not require proof of sex act for purpose of demonstrating a 2251 violation, where the government proof of sexual explicit conduct is the sex act and nothing more. The government cannot enhance based entirely on theoretical. Here, the element of sexual explicit conduct is alleged proven by Jane testimony that the defendant produced a visual depiction of their sex acts. The conduct formed the basis of the charges, the charge offense that should not also serve as a basis to enhance the defendant's sentence notwithstanding and the government did not need to prove the sex act to establish 2251 violation such an enhancement will constitute an imperishable double punishment under the facts of this case the government agrees the defendant offense level should not be enhanced by four levels for pursuant to ussc the government urges a two-level enhancement pursuant pursuant arguing that the defendant stay in touch with jane by cell phone in order to induce her to travel to, to see him defendant and jane were in a relationship lived together and traveled together defendant did not use a cell phone for the purpose of any communication with his girlfriend the government and and the public may be outraged that the defendant's entire relationship with Jane, who he believed to be 18 when he was in his 40s. The government and the public may be outraged that the defendant continued his relationship with Jane after learning she lied to him about her age, even though the state of Illinois in the relationship was lawful. But the government is clearly attempting to artificially enhanced the sense by ignoring the true nature of the defendant's relationship with Jane. But differently, if the defendant had not traveled with Jane to California on an isolated occasion a couple of months before Jane's 18th birthday and had not recorded video recorded his sexual act with Jane, there would have been no racketary act as to Jane's whatsoever. The government is free to feel moral outrage about the defendant's relationship with Jane, but it cannot enhance the sentence based on factors that ignore their own evidence. The government fiction and that the defendant used cell phone to persuade, induce, or coerce or facilitate Jane's travel should be rejected since it ignored the nature of their relationship entirely and the basis of this level already punished the defendant for his conduct according to according a level two enhancement pursuant must be rejected. Base level twenty two adjusted level twenty two. The government now finds it convenient to charge its theory to prosecute to sue its sentencing arguments. The forced labor offense involved a base level of 22. As the government concedes, the heart of its forced level count is that alleged the defendant obtained labor from Jane forcing or threatening force against her in connection with sexual activities with other women and men, none of which occurred when she was underage. As argued in the defendant's Rule 29 motion, there's simply no evidence, even from Jane, that she was forced or threatened with physical harm to participate in group sex acts. There belated claim that she did not want to participate in such activity does not demonstrate that the defendant forced her to engage in such activities through physical harm or threat of physical harm that said if the court concludes that the evidence established that Jane participation in group sex acts amounts to an offense of criminal sex abuse, the government calculation of an adjusted offense level of 36 would be accurate. But as stated above, the government did not establish the defendant committed an offense of criminal sexual abuse in connection with Jane group sex acts with defendant and others because the record is devoid of evidence of force in connection with those acts. K. Racketeering Act 12, Man Act, Violation of Faith, Base Level, Base Offense Level 14, Adjust Defense Level 14. 
Again, the government has no basis whatsoever to seek a four-level enhancement for a fraud based on the defendant's failure to disclose his herpes diagnosis to faith. As argued previously, fraud involves a false representation, scientific reliance, and harm. Okay, case law. Okay, while there have a few variations of these elements, harm is always presented. Okay, um... Breaking ties are up to reasonable calculation, deceive, and intend to deceive. Okay. The government evidence does not show that the defendant falsely represented anything to faith or that faith relied on it. Or any misrepresentation. Most importantly, there is no evidence of harm since faith did not contract herpes from the defendant. Faith testified that after traveling to New York, she was diagnosed with herpes type 1 after getting cold sores on her mouth. Nearly 50% of the population has this type of 1 cold sores. Even the government expert would con concede that herpes type 1 can be contracted from kissing. The record is devoid of evidence that Faith suffered any harm in connection with the defendant's purported failure to disclose his herpes diagnosis to her as such a four level enhancement under a fraud theory is non nonsensical L racketeering act 13 forced labor faith the forced labor offense involved a base offense level of 22 as argued the defendants rule 29 motion there's simply no evidence even from faith that she was forced or threatened with simple harm, with physical harm to provide oral sex to the defendant. Faith described an episode in Los Angeles where the defendant allegedly had a serious conversation with her and then directed her to give him oral sex. She does not describe the defendant using any force or threatening in any force. As a reminder, Faith never alleged that she was a victim forced to engage in any sexual contact and denied the characterization of her relationship with the defendant. As such, the defendant objected to the government's contention that his conduct involving sexual criminal sexual abuse and that a base of uh, offense level is 30 is appropriate pursuant to USSG. That said, if this if this court concludes that the evidence established an offense of criminal sexual abuse, the government's calculation will be correct. M. Racketeering Act 14 Man Act violation faith fence level adjust defense level 14. For the reason argued in connection with Racketeering Act 12, no four level enhancement is justified under the government's novel fraud theory. And role enhancement. The government seeks a four-level enhancement pursuant to USSG on the basis that the defendant was an organizer or leader of criminal activity that involved four or more participants or otherwise extensive. The defendant has argued extensively that he that the government failed to show that existence of an enterprise the government evidence showed that defendant was a famous entertainer who employed many people over the years the defendant was unquestionably the boss of his employees but the government fell far short to establish that he was a leader of a criminal activity indeed the government did not even attempt to prove criminal activity of the organization and other employees of the organization a four level enhancement is simply not warranted here oh minor in custody care supervisory control of of the defendant Brazenly, the government seeks to enhance the defendant guidelines range under a theory that Jane Parents entrusted the defendant to her supervision when she was a minor, purportedly to assist her with her music career, after which Jane lived with the defendant. The record shows that Jane Parents directed Jane to lie to the defendant about her age and then and encourage her to introduce him in April 2015 when she was 17 years old. The real time text messages between Jane and her mother re re uh, 
reveal i'm sorry her mother revealed that jane mother wanted jane to promote jane's music career by commencing a relationship with him again the government seat to sanitize the facts of the case which shows that jane met the defendant for the first time she immediately began traveling with the defendant and never returned home nothing in the record suggests that jane parents objected to this relationship the evidence shows quite the opposite indeed jane's mother jokingly told her daughter weeks after jane met the defendant and her son-in-law defendant that her son-in-law was going to be older than her jane mother certainly knew jane's age even if the defendant did not the record did not show that jane parents entrusted the defendant with jane care as much as jane was adamant that she wanted to live with the defendant in chicago and jane parents were eager to support her relationship with the defendant presumably because they hoped financial riches would flow to them if it if it uh, it was defendant who sent jane home after jane disclosed she was 17 years old regardless Jane was not a minor in the state of Illinois at the age of 17 when she returned to sh Chicago shortly before her 18th birthday as the government contends. As such, enhancement under the theory cannot apply. P. Adjusted offense level. The following chart summarizes defendant position regarding the offense level for each group counted. Defendant contends that Racketary Acts 5, 6, and 7 should be grouped pursuant to USSC, SSG, and should Racketary Acts 9 and 10. Probation agrees. Defend, the defendant contends that the combined offense level is 35. The offense level applicable to the group of the highest offense level is 32, pursuant to USSG. The number of units that remain group represent. The offense level should be increased by three levels units for a total of 35. Because defendant criminal history score is 1, the guideline range properly calculated is 108, 168 to 210 months. Conclusion, for the foregoing reason, defendant sentence range is 168 to 210 months, as, w as will be set forth in the defendant's supplemental sentencing memorandum. Defendant should be sentenced to a below guideline sentence. Respectfully, Jennifer Bonjean.